Yeah. Okay. Have you heard okay. from okay. Councilman? Okay. 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 Good evening. I'd like to call the Gotre City Council meeting to order tonight, Tuesday, June 21st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. I ask that you please silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices. Also, I'd like to ask our planning director, Mr. Scott Ankerson, to lead us in the prayer and Councilman Adam College to lead us in the pledge. Heavenly Father, as we bow before you tonight, we give you honor and praise. We thank you, Lord, that you're an everlasting God, that your love is unfailing. Lord, tonight I pray for unity and discernment in this meeting as we conduct city business. God, I also ask for your continued protection over our first responders, our police, fire, our public works, all our city staff, Lord, and our citizens. God, we, uh, we just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice on Calvary's cross for our sins, and we ask all this in his name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman College, and thank you, Mr. Anderson. That brings us to our agenda order approval. Do we have any changes, Ms. Shanksy? Yes, Mayor. Uh, the first change is taken Thursday. There's a typo on the announcement. It should reflect it's June 30th. I need to remove item number one, the abatement at 2019 South Haven, the property has been cleaned. And I need to add an addendum to consent agenda item number five that you should have at the It was provided by Josh. Okay. This time, it's June 25th, not June 25th. Just like I said. This is Gordon. Thank you, Councilman Gillott. Councilman Gillott's joined the call. Okay, any other changes? No, sir. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda order approval with the changes by Ms. Shancy? So moved. Motion by Councilman Jackson. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman College. Any discussion? All in favor? Councilman Gillott? Aye. Motion carries. That brings us to our announcements by our city manager, Ms. Shancy. <coughs> yes. Hooping into summer around the World Basketball Tournament ages 10 through 16 will be June 29th starting at 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. at Baco Park. Tasty Thursday will be June 23rd beginning at 11 a.m. at the Sing River Mall property. Training around the summer engaging fitness program will be July 6th starting at 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. at Baco Park. And the Gauchet's Farmer's Market will be July 9th on Saturday starting at 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. at George Martin City Park. Thank you, Ms. Shancy. That brings us to our presentation agenda. We have a presentation by our um, police chief, David Bever, regarding the police department updates. Uh, may I have a second? You can, Ms. Shancy. So this is something that I'm trying to start or starting with the police chief. But I'm going to let each director, on the, uh, different director on the second meeting of each month kind of stand up and tell you what's going on in their department and, and present to you what they're working on or however they want to do it. And I thought it would just be good to keep everybody informed. And so we start with Chief Weber tonight. Thank you, Ms. Shancy. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to take the time. I know there's some questions or concerns regarding the police department. And what I want to focus on is where the department was at when I took over, where we're at today, and the future goals of my department. Uh, main issues at the end of March of 2020 when I took over were low staffing, all time high, low morale, it was partly caused by the low staffing, and we saw a spike. Violent crime, like the three shooting. Councilman Gillette, can you mute your phone, please? Okay. 
Okay. So with low staffing, we had 11 vacancies. Um, issue since 2016 is what we continuously we've been having a hard time finding people to get into law enforcement. Um, the past two years, we have averaged anywhere between five to seven openings. Where we had to constantly use officers to work overtime to fill in and short staffing on the shifts. Low morale, overworked during the low staffing. Like I said, we had COVID. Um, it was just being shorthanded. Anybody took off for any reason, we had to call somebody in on overtime and burn them out. And officers' perception of the difference to their needs, mainly caused by generational differences between the leadership. You know, and the perception of lack of communication the concern among the officers were uh, they didn't know what was going on with the department. Uh, the crime, uh, this is the last five years, I've picked two categories that have been recent concerns grouped in burglaries and aggravated assaults. So the green line is your burglaries and the blue line is your aggravated assaults. So as you see, there is a downward trend on aggravated assaults in our city you know, to today. Same thing with vehicle burglaries. Uh, there was a dramatic decrease in 2020, and that was mainly caused by COVID. Everybody shut down, everybody was at home, had less crime. Mm -hmm. um, started picking back up in 2011, and halfway through this year, we're still not up to where we were last year. So where are we at today? Staffing. One of the first things I did was try to increase our recruitment efforts. What's helped us a lot was last year's budget approving the new pay, uh, pay scales for officers, allow us to attract officers from other agencies. So today I hired seven experienced officers with over 60 years combined experience and three new officers who will have to go to the academy. And I currently sit with one open. Morale, we have improved morale. Um, one of the first things I did in our police station, the administrative wing is kind of locked off and I'm giving everybody access. They rekey the whole department. All their keys are allowed back to my office. So they have access to me and the, the department staff. Never they need it. Then I'm also seeking input from the employees on um, their needs to do their job and what they're looking for. Uh, responses to crime, started overtime details, targeting those areas that we had despite burglaries or despite the violent crime. Also partnered with Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics where <coughs> they were focusing more of their efforts countywide on specific gang members that we've identified that were responsible for this violent crime that we've been seeing all the shootings. And we have increased our park patrols, uh, very supportive of parks and of the, especially Bingo Park. It's valuable to the community and it gives the children something to do rather than being left up to their own devices. So future goals for my department, Maintain staffing one way through career development. Making sure they have continuing education that helps them do their job once they get out of the academy. Proper equipment for officers. Um, some of our stuff is outdated. Uh, Representative Palazzo picked up a project where we will be replacing the radio systems, our body cameras, and our car cameras if fully funded through Congress. And that was over five hundred thousand dollars to do so. Currently our radio systems and dispatch are donated to us from Pasadena PD and it was hoped for that. <laughs> <laughs> also want to create an accredited department where officers are proud to look at and we are submitting for a grant right now that will help pay for accreditation for the pay for the accreditation fees, the training, over time, and the equipment we need to be a public credit department. Maintaining high morale, 
Uh, one way I want to do this is to rebring the department to do us. Uh, I think the visual change will help change the mood at the agency of the officers. Uh, coming up with a formalized officer award program. Maybe these nice little accommodations for any work they do that's superior to their day to day operations, basically. That's an important work. On top of the officer of the year that we do every year, I want to add a civilian employee of the year and supervisor of the year. Because currently, we employ 11 civilian employees at our department. So I think that will help spotlight the work they do too. And the promotion ceremonies, um, we kind of started this with me and the captains that we just recently promoted, and the feedback I got from that was very positive. So we're going to continue this on with our sergeants and lieutenants that we just promoted in a couple of weeks. And I want to develop an officer wellness program to help with officers mentally and physically stay in shape and be physically sound and mentally sound. So Long-term solutions to response to crime, I want to change to intelligence based policing. Basically that's identifying small percentage of the population that's responsible for all the crime, right? And we want to make their lives difficult in the city of Russia. So they go somewhere else and do what they want. We want to increase the uh, officer visibility. One way I'm looking at doing this is um, the light bars on top of the patrol cars. You can hook up where the corner lights are low in blue and steady. So when they're driving through neighborhoods at night, doing their business checks, the public will be seeing them instead of just a set of headlights and not knowing who it is. You know, I increase community involvement with our department in a way of social media. Apparently all we have is a Facebook page. I don't want to get and spam that. The help Sam, who was another. No. <laughs> Things you got Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Each generation primarily goes one of those applications, so we want to try to broaden our audience. Uh, improve access to supervisors uh, two ways offhand. In the lobby, you will be uh, posting what lieutenants on duty, what sergeants on duty each day, and on top of that, you'll be given. Uh, Supervisor, basically a cell phone that's going to be whoever's the senior supervisor on duty is going to have on them so the public can call him directly or anybody who needs direct contact. You know, I took the question who's on duty today? That's one direct one. And uh, continue to gain input of the community needs from the community. It's kind of hard sometimes to know what they want from my department. So having your input will help. Next. Oh. Thank you, Chief Beverly. Um, do we have any comments from Council? Uh, I think it was a great presentation. This is something that I wanted to see and, and you made it happen. Um, I've noticed the uptick in morale and, and everything with the department. I've been really impressed since you took the position. Um, it, to have a good leader, you have to be approachable. You are approachable. You're a nice guy. and. Uh, you can really tell that you don't only really want to improve the department, but each staff member as an individual, and, and that goes a long way. So I, I think over the next couple of years and into your future, we're going to continuously see a positive uptick in the department. Thank you. Yeah, I'll rebuttal on that. You're doing a great job. Um, I can see the improvement. Um, and a lot of the issues that I have in uh, in the south side of Goshe, it's, it's, it's just pretty much you know slowed all the way down. So y'all did a great job on that. Thank you. Councilman Gallat, do you have any comment on the presentation? Not at this time. Thanks, David. Appreciate your effort to everything you're doing. Thank you, sir. Councilman Collins. Uh, I just appreciate the community involvement. That's key to any police department or municipality is uh, the public understanding and knowing that the police are there for them and 
you're not there just to be stiff. You're there to interact with the residents of this city, a majority of them being kids, especially if you have Baco Park and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it changes mm -hmm. the mentality of where they're not scared to talk to you. Right. And and that's an important factor. We've got issues up in North Goche also that we're trying to work towards that same sort of rationale. So I appreciate all the effort you're putting into it. I think we're going to see a great improvements here in addition to what we're already seeing in the near future. But thank you. Thank you, Chief, for your presentation. Appreciate it. Councilman Elton. I appreciate you sharing your vision. People need to know what you what you're all about and I think they're they're learning it. There's some good positive changes I've seen there and I appreciate that. Uh, I think it's paramount, like uh, Adam said, interaction with the community and our, our, our groups in the community is is a key to success in that position. And I appreciate your, your vision. Thank you. Chief Bever, I just, you know, to say I'm ecstatic is an understatement because nine years ago, July 1st, <clears throat> We did not have full staffing at most, and we continued to struggle with that due to pay, budget constraints, and everything. Our, that's kudos to you, um, our city manager, working and seeing the need of our public safety at budget time to give that to you all, not just you, but also the fire department and all of our staff. She didn't, she tried to not leave one employee behind. Um, that was her deal when we first hired her, and she is been committed to that so Paula Mishancy thank you for that but thank Chief for continuing to let your employees be heard because you can tell a difference but me as the mayor when I go meet with other mayors or I'm at a community meeting now to be the one that's not there with other elected officials saying we're getting your employee, we're getting your employee, to now, <laughs> Mayor Bond, quit taking yeah, our employees. <laughs> um, it makes you feel good, and Chief, I just want you to know that it's not just one agency on the coast that has told me what a great job in your leadership and how blessed we are to have you. Um, it's all of them that I've spoken with, so I just wanna wish you well in your um, continued endeavors, and we're here to support you as a council um, with Ms. Shancy. Anything you need, we'll be glad to try to accommodate you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, that brings us to our business agenda. Item number one was tape um, removed because it's been cleaned. That brings us to business agenda. Item number two. Consideration for an abatement at 3517 Raintree, Goche, Mississippi, Edna Kilgore Estate by our planning director, Mr. Scott Ankerson. Thank you, Mayor. The Code Enforcement Department is asking the council to consider this abatement approval at 3517 Raintree. It has been a case of the Code Enforcement Department since January of 2021. Uh, currently, we're under the impression that the owner, previous owner, is deceased and the remaining occupants left rubbish and trash debris in the yard and when they moved we tried to contact the owner that's when we learned of the passing of the previous owner um, the tax assessor's office reflects that the taxes are actually two years delinquent it hasn't been redeemed uh, in 2019 or 2020 so therefore the code enforcement department made the decision to ask for this abatement for the removal of the rubbish, the trash, and the debris from the property. Also to mow and clean if needed. Um, so we, we had sent out notices. Uh, we posted the notices for the abatement and of course the, for the council hearing and mailed the, the owner to, to the proper manner required by law. All reasons steps have been taken to ensure the property owner agency to provide adequate notice. And that the city of Goshe intends to enter the property and remove any items that attract the welfare and the neighbors and the other residents of the street. The recommendation is the Code Enforcement Office request the City Council approve this abatement for the removal of the rubbish, trash, debris, and to mow and clean the property at 3517 Rain Tree in accordance with the Mississippi Code. And if approved, Council may charge the cost as a lien against the property to be collected upon sale of the property, collect it through civil proceedings. You can add $1,500 or 50% your choice to either of the above collection methods. I've included pictures of the property, the posting, parcel information, the code case history, 
Uh, and if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. I also have my presentation with an officer here tonight to answer the questions. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson. Do we have any public comments on business agenda item number two? No comments. Do we have a motion by council? Um, and if we have a motion, don't forget to mention the penalty and the assessed, um, how to assess them and collect them. I'll make a motion that we approve the abatement for the removal of rubbish, trash, and debris in the Mo property at 3517 Rain Tree in accordance with Mississippi Code annotated with the cost being placed as a lien against the property and a 50% uh, penalty in a, to the above collection methods. We have a motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman George. Any discussion starting with Councilman Elvin? No discussion. Councilman Anderson? No comment. Councilman College? No comment. Councilman Galat? No comment. Councilman Jackson? No, sir. Councilman George? Clean it up. <laughs> I just want to thank you, Mr. Ankerson, and your staff for y'all's continued dedication on working to get the city clean. We have a motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman George. All in favor? Councilman Galat? Aye. Motion carries. That brings us to business agenda item number three. Consider a request for a 686 square foot variance to square footage requirements for an accessory building in an R1 low density single family residential zoning district located at 2501 Bayou Bend Road, Goche, Mississippi, GPC number 22-14-VAR by our planning director, Mr. Scott Ankerson. Thank you, Mayor. The planning department has received this request from the plot stubs for a 686 square foot variance to square foot requirements for an assessment building in R1 low density single family residential district. The request property, as said, is zoned R1. The proposed accessory structure will be, according to the applicant, a 30 by 40 building equaling oh, I'm sorry it says 40 by 40 but I'm pretty sure we agree in the planning part that you can decrease that to 30 by 40 so this says 40 by 40 building equaling 1600 square feet according to the unified development ordinance lot covers an accessory structure in an R1 district shall not exceed 20% of the rear lot or 50% of the principal structure whichever is less so the applicant is asking to surpass that by 686 square feet. There's an existing 392 square foot pool house and a 320 square foot detached garage and a 108 square foot storage building in the yard. So all these have been calculated, subtracted from that 50%, and that's how the planning department has came up with the 686 square foot variance. So I've included uh, the definition of variance in the packet. I've also included the criteria for approval as outlined in 4.18.4 of the Unified Development Ordinance um, that are listed one through four. If you have any questions on those, the Planning Commission recommends the City Council approve the variances presented for a 40 by 30 accessory structure that would have hardy bore siding and contingent upon the carport attached to the main structure. To explain that a little further, you have a detached carport on the one side of the home. Uh, I, talked to Mr. Stubbs about he was going to repair the roof on it. I told him that if he actually attached that to the house, it could add square footage to the house, which would in return add square footage to 50% that he would be allowed, so that would decrease the variance number. So he did attach that, and so that allowed him to decrease that to the 686. Um, if you have any questions further on that, I'll explain it there. I to. The Planning Commission recommends the City Council approve variances presented as, uh, and that the structure would have hardy board siding and contingent upon the carport being attached to the main structure. So the City Council may approve the variance request that is presented, approve the variance request for changes, or deny the variance request. I've included the uh, excerpt from the GPC meeting, date uh, 6222, and the complete packet. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson. Do we have any public comments? If we do, you can come to the podium, state your first, last name, your address, and you have three minutes to speak. Any citizens want to come speak? Three minutes. Thank you. I want to 
wasn't sure if Mr. Stubb was going to speak to his application. Um, but I guess. Um, um. <laughs> uh, my name is Jackie Bertuzzi. I actually represent um, one of the property owners who has property adjacent to Mr. Stubbs. His address is 5605 Gaucher Bankley Road. And um, he actually owns property on two sides of Mr. Stubbs. His house is on one side of it. And then he owns the corner lot um, on Gaucher Bankley and by the end, along with his great nephew, James Vaughn, and who has called me, they're all here. Um, this has been to the Planning Commission twice. And the first time that Mr. Stubbs went, he was asking for a 900 square foot variance. And I think that was when the building was supposed to be 40 by 40. There were some issues that came up in that meeting. And I think he went back and presented a, a revised application, reducing the size of the building somewhat. Um, there's been a lot of confusion actually over the size of the variance. And now it's stated as 686. I think when we were at the planning commission back um, earlier this month, it was down to 286, but I didn't hear any discussion of that tonight. Um, also, I have not heard any discussion of the 20% of the rear lot calculation. Everything that Mr. Anderson has presented has been associated with the 50% of the principal structure area and not the 20% of the rear lot, um, but your ordinance says that it's not to exceed whichever one of those is less. However, whatever the size of the variance is, the fundamental issue is whether he meets the criteria for the variance. And we submit to you that he does not. Um, you have, I understand, the um, definition in your packets. When Mr. Stubbs presented his first application, and in response to the first question, which deals with the first criteria of whether special conditions and circumstances existed, he answered none that I'm aware of. And that was a very correct and honest answer. Um, so by his own admission on the original application, he didn't meet the very first criteria. When he came back with his amended application, he did state that special circumstances existed um, but the items he talked about really did not justify any special circumstances um, or criteria. On the second question, whether literal interpretation of the provisions of the ordinance would deprive him of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the same district, that's a no also. Um, he's subject to the same provisions as every other homeowner in that neighborhood and in that district. Um, on the third question, on his amended application where it says, do the special conditions and circumstances result from actions of the applicant, he said yes. And in order for you to grant this variance, the answer to that has to be no. Um, but he actually was very honest again and talked about the fact that he just wants to be able to work on his um, cars, his hobby cars, and in his yard without having to leave and go somewhere where he apparently is currently paying storage fees. And while that's understandable, that is not the criteria for a variance. There's simply nothing special about his property, nothing peculiar that's making him have to comply with something that other people in the area wouldn't. One thing that came up at the planning commission was that two other homeowners in this particular neighborhood have structures that do exceed this. Yeah, However, those people built those before the city was incorporated, had incorporated that area. So they were grandfathered in. Um, that's only fair. I mean, that's how things work when you incorporate in a city people that already have buildings there. You can't make them tear them down. But now that the city has incorporated that area, either the ordinances mean something or they don't. Ms. Bertucci, you're getting close to your three minutes. Okay, um, wrapping up. Um, so we're just saying he does not meet the criteria. It's a legal question really, in spite of the matters of convenience that um, he's asking for this for. It's a legal question and he doesn't meet the criteria. 
Thank you, Ms. Bertuzzi. Any other citizen comments? No other citizen yes, comments? Yes, 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 Mr. Stubbs. Mr. Stubbs takes your name, address. Yes, I'm Clark Stubbs at uh, 2501 Bay Bend. And the young lady is correct on all the things that she brought up. Uh, the thing that I do not agree with or understand is why this has become such an item for me to build a successfully building in my backyard. Uh, I'm again only asking for to be considered as she mentioned that some of my neighbors have buildings that exceeds the requirements and yes they were grant part of the end. But why am I being, you know, frowned upon for me wanting to build one that I have been willing to downsize. And I've also agreed to if if it is uh, approved to utilize siding or whatever to make it uh, aesthetically uh, appealing to the neighbors. Uh, along with this their access is behind my house. There's a road that goes from Goshe Van Cleve Road to the property, and I don't see where that's an issue. Uh, I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to exceed the, the setback requirements of the five feet from the rear to the building or from the side, from the 10 feet to the side. Uh, I've spoken with my neighbor that lives right next to it, this door to me that has one of these it has the building that's a little oversized and stuff like that. We have no problems. So I just don't understand why this is a big issue. Yes, I do agree that I did not include those, my out, my separate garage and the storage building. But again, because I didn't think this was going to be such a hassle. Because where I want to locate this building is not feasibly visible for anyone except for the people that's going from Go see Van Lee Road to their property. And their property is set back behind where this building would be located. So I, I just don't understand the issue. And what I do see is a legal, it's gonna be a legal item. But uh, you know, we're not gonna, you know, I just I don't think that's right. And you know, I these are the terms, but I'll leave that at that. So Thank you, Mr. Stutz. Any other citizen comments? Do we have a motion? Can I ask for a couple of clarifications before we do a motion? Sure. Um, you know, the, our <clears throat> item says 1,600 square foot, but then the Planning Commission minutes say 1,200 square foot. So that would technically put it at a 286 square correct. foot. I was hoping you would ask that. So yes, and, to correct myself in the original presentation, it would decrease the size of the building to 1,200 square foot if, you, if he's requesting the 40 by 30, mm -hmm. which would actually decrease the variance request to 286 square feet. That okay. would be the, the actual number of variance requests. Now, the next question is, is this 286 foot square foot based on the 20% of the available backyard or the 50% of the primary it's structure? Based on the 50% of the primary structure because the ordinance says whichever is less and that is less. That is a less. Yes, sir. Now, and this 286 square foot is also based on the carport already being attached now and considered part of the primary structure. Correct, so I, if, if approved by um, Planning Commission's recommendation, I would not be able to issue the permit unless the work was done where the carport is attached. Okay, so that 286 is with the carport yes. and that actually incorporates, does that incorporate the overall square footage of the primary structure also to Correct. increase that yes. amount? And that's where we get to the 26. Was the carport being connected? And part of the primary structure. Yes, sir. And 50% of that primary structure is where we come up to the 286 square foot. Correct. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Danos, you agree with all that? Yes, sir. Okay. I have a question. Sir. Mr. Stubbs, we already are. <laughs> We're in council comments right now. I, I would like to hear what he has to say. Okay. Because we well, did get we some. Get a motion we did second, get some clear clear. Okay. A motion and a second, and I was going to let him speak. Well, it might have something pertinent to the motion. I mean, we just, Mr. We just Stubbs, provided some additional. Stand information. up and state your name and address. Again, Forest Road, 2501 Bayou Van Road. 
also have a pool house that's attached, that's not attached to my house, which is Mr. Anderson brought out the square footage of that. Now I can take and also add a breezeway between my house and this structure as well. This is an extra cost to me, but it gives me the square footage that I need. Now if I need to go this route, unfortunately I would because I, I, I think I'm being, you know, frowned upon for what I'm looking for. And again, I don't think I'm asking for anything that's out of my league or shit that, that's, that's going to detract from the neighborhood of the location of where it's going to be and what I'm going to, what I'm willing really to build the building out of. You know, yes, when I initially inquired, I was going to build a metal, metal building. But now, since the neighbors have you know, mentioned that that would not necessarily be aesthetically pleasing. I went to the Harley Road siding, you know, to do that, to utilize that material as building. Again, I'm not going to be using it as a commercial anything it's for my own personal use and things of this nature. So, just wanted to add that in so I can add those square footage, I can add that square footage in with the breezeway, and then I won't need the barriers if that's the route we need to take. That's the route we can go. Thank you, Mr. Stubbs. I was going to bring that up, so you answered it for me. I didn't have to bring it up in my book. Could Scott elaborate on that? Um, well, my question to Mr. Ankerson earlier, because one, it's a shame that somebody owns property and has to go through a bureaucracy to try to do something when the adjoining property owners have the same and I tell you the same, if you've not been down the road, the same type of structure in the front yard, not the backyard, the front yard. So I want to reiterate that. Also reiterate that his property is adjoining a commercial piece of property, meaning a Dollar General. Any type of commercial activity can go on that parcel. But here tonight, I asked Mr. Ankerson, because if he, our unified development ordinance, if he attaches them to the home, that's home structure. So therefore, he don't even have to be here tonight and he can build his thing. And he didn't even have to go through all this. If he meets the rear setbacks of the 20, 25 foot. 25. Yeah, 25 feet. So he would meet it if he um, came forward and attached all these to make them a structure. He don't even have to be here this evening. So I just want to remind everybody of that. What is the maximum he can build legally? A little over 900 square feet? So legally, it would be 1,812 square feet is his total allowance for assessor structure. Um, based on the square footage of 50 percent of the square footage of the home but what i wanted to say was you were asking if, it, if he would be able to do that if he added the pool house and so i did the math the pool house is 392 square feet but you have to cut that in half that's 50 percent which would be it would leave he would still need a 90 square foot variance if he attached the pool house i just wanted to throw that out there of course he could always decrease the building size a little bit and get rid of that nine, nine how, how much that is square foot. 90 square foot. 90 square feet. You have to increase the size by 90 more square feet. That's less than 10 by 10. Right. And just for clarification, these other structures on the adjoining properties that our grandfather did, if they were ever to be destroyed in a hurricane or something like that, they would actually have to come back in and apply for a variance in order to rebuild if it was over 50% damage, correct? Okay. Right. So the homeowners that have that those structures there, I, I don't know if they're aware if they ever have any damage or anything like that, they would have to come apply for the same thing. Does that include a burn down or mm -hmm. anything? A burn, any damage. Any damage beyond 50% substantially damaged, then that would fall correct. Any other questions? Mr. Well, Mr. Stubbs, I appreciate you listening to the neighbors' concerns and trying to address their concerns. <laughs> And I appreciate you trying to have, you know, stay at home and enjoy your property that you invested here in Goche and you own more than one property. And we appreciate your investment here. I have a question. Uh-huh. 
Go ahead, Councilman Guy. The workshop of 320 square feet and the storage shed of 185.6 square feet, are, they, are those permanent structures, are they on raised foundations? In other words, permanent meaning concrete floors. Uh, the shop is, is on a foundation. The storage building is on cinder blocks. You know, now it's moved. It's moved. So it did, can be moved. Did you hear that, Councilman Glott? No. The storage unit is on cinder blocks because it can be moved, and the other structure is on concrete foundation. Okay. All uh, right. Okay. If you had any intentions of eliminating that store shed and put it in the public shed, you would be less of a variance you'd be asking for in yeah. accordance with what's been presented here. Yeah, if he even did that too, he wouldn't need to be here and he could still build his um, structure. Uh, what, <laughs> what I'm looking at is this layout. You've got almost the whole yard completely filled with buildings. Well, that's, that's not true. That's my drawing because my drawing is not to scale. <laughs> <laughs> what, is it, what is your acreage? Yes. What is your acreage? About, about an acre. About an acre. Okay. So do we have a motion? Do we need to make a motion if he's going to change what he's doing? Well, I think he needs to understand whether he's going to get the variance or if he needs to change what he's doing. So, Mr. Stubbs, are you going to change what you're doing or you want us to? What do you want us to do? Say again, please. Do you want to still try to apply for your variance or go back and do your other and be able to do it by adding your breezeways, attaching them to the home structure? Well, uh, at this point in time, I think we're just going to go and the breezeway because if I bring in the breezeway along with the pool house, all this adds to my square footage of the house. Okay, and the breezeway is a part of the house now, so that square footage, so however long that distance is between my house and the, and the pool house, that's going to be added as well. So that also lowers the square foot minimum that's required. So, I think we'll go And then if you attach the new structure, then it all is combined to the house. <laughs> That'll give you the other 90 feet there, the breezeway will. Well, I, you know, I just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, what I would like to do is to make this as easier for me and not offend my neighbors. I don't, you know, I'm not here because of a, you know, any discontent you know, situation, but I also want the people to, you know, look at my, you know, request here and why I'm asking for this. Right. You know, I'm not asking this just to be a, a butthead. Right. You know, I'm asking mm -hmm. for this, you know, to make my life more convenient as well. Right. So, like, and we appreciate you working with some of your neighbors and they were very accepted of what you were um, doing and appreciated you um, communicating with them and making the changes you made. And they did relay those sentiments to me. So as I understand it, you're going to go ahead with the breezeway and then reapply for your permit for the building? I think Josh has a couple comments regarding Most likely, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I've got to get with my, uh, to get with my guy that does the construction to find out you know, what it's going to take and what it's going to cost as well. And then we'll go from there. Yes, sir. Because it's going to boil down to one or two things here. You see, I can build this like this, and I hate to say this, or I can move out of the city of Goshen. And, you know, one or two, because I want my building to be close to me, not halfway across town. I have probably no one to that terrace, and I can build a building over there. But I don't want to have to get up and leave my house to go do this, or come back at one or two o'clock in the morning whenever I get done doing what I'm doing. That's one, of, that's one of my main problems. And I, I don't think it should get to this for what I want to do. I agree with you 100%. Okay. 
And I mean, just like we have three attorneys here, I work at a law firm, so I can state it. You ask all three of them something, they all gonna give you a different answer. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, go ahead, Mr. Tannels. Uh, I would just suggest that if he's gonna amend or withdraw his application, that maybe we table this item. Uh, and if he's gonna withdraw, maybe he could get a refund on his application fee. Uh, if he doesn't need a variance or whatever he wants to do, then we go that route. Yes. If he wants to continue uh, or revise his request, then uh, he can continue under the same application. Do you want to do that, Mr. Stubbs? Can I get a vote on the variance, please? Well, if we. Okay. I think he understood the do you, the thing of it was was if you wanted to go through how you were going to go through and we weren't going to vote on it that we would we would just table it and then if you wanted a refund we would refund you your money well not necessarily that but he could also investigate the cost of what it would take to put the breezeway if he wanted to go that route and if he decided it was it was cost preventative to you to go that route then we could bring this up again at a later meeting to vote on it or we can vote on it now whichever way you'd like to go sir i'd like to vote on it now because i know it's going to be a cost because you know the, the cost to just attach the carport to the house is you know, a cost that you want to take away the mother payments and stuff like this so now it's an added cost but you know, I guess this what he's trying to say possibly doing business I guess if, if it gets voted down now you won't get your refund which he's trying to explain if it's voted down now the variance you will not get the refund but if you and want, it won't be tabled if you want to table it and bring it back and you decide what you want to do with the breezeway then you won't need the variance and we can refund your money for that you applied to this you want to table okay all right based on that i'll make a motion that we table agenda item number three okay i have a motion by councilman college to table it do i have a second 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 by councilman anderson any discussion starting with councilman elvin no discussion. councilman anderson no Councilman College? Yes, uh, I agree with you, Mr. Stubbs. Uh, we've had some circumstances in the past with these various requests, and um, you know, these various requests are coming in, they've got signatures from all their neighbors saying no problem, no anything like that. And I'm sure what you bought in the build is going to be very conducive to the eye. I appreciate everything you do. You come to our council meetings constantly, you're very aware of your community. Uh, but we have to also follow the rules of the law and cannot put the city in an opportunity to where we may have a suit against us in the future. Uh, I'd love to work with you the best we can. I know our planning commission, our, our planning director wants to. So let's see what we can do without having the lawyers involved. I guess that's the best way to put it. Thank you. This is Shane, you gotta do that. Um, Councilman Gillard. I heard lawyers involved. A mayor said three different answers. Uh oh. <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> yeah, because that's what you'll get. Um, Councilman Jackson. Yes, sir. I wish you the best on this. And you know you got our support. Thank you. Councilman um, George. Um, and Mr. Stubb, like Councilman College said, you know, there is ordinance and everything, and just like you heard, we were furnished information. The Planning Commission received some information from the Legal Council. The Council received a little different information from the Legal Council. And then you've heard Ms. Bertusi, who is Legal Counsel for your property owners, who obviously have an issue with your whatever you might put there but you're going to work with us and we'll work with you and the planning commission was supportive of you and we will and we're glad for your investment here thank you okay all in favor motion carries to table to table it aye thank you councilman galat that brings us to business agenda item number four consider a request for a five-foot variance to side yard setback requirements for an accessory building in an r1 low density single family residential zoning district 2338 sandalwood place gpc number 22-19-var by planning director mr scott anderson thank you mayor 
Planning Department has received this request from Dwight Hoover for a five foot bearings to side yard setback requirements for the accessory building in R1 Lodensy Single Family District. And the applicant would like to build an accessory building that would be five foot from the side property line. The required setback from the side property line is 10 feet. So in this situation, I, have, I did visit the, the property. He does have a, a protected oak tree that he's trying to uh, prevent damaging with the foundation of this building. I feel like he would get into the root system and it could possibly damage the tree. Also, this lot is uh, particular as far as the, the stormwater flow, and I feel like if he puts the building where the ordinance says that he would have to put it, he would disturb the flow of the stormwater in a, in a sense. It could cause some damage down the road. Uh, so, therefore, I did tell the Planning Commission in my presentation that I felt like that it wasn't a particular peculiar lot in, in that aspect. The Planning Commission recommended the City Council approve the variance as presented because of the unique character of the yard and the protected trees. The City Council may approve the variance request as presented, approve the variance request with changes, or deny the variance request. And again, I would include the complete packet and the excerpt from the GPC meeting dated 6 22. I'll answer any questions that you may have. That Thank you, Mr. Ankerson. Do we have any public comments? No public comments. Do we have a motion by council? I'll make a motion that we approve planning, commi planning commission's recommendation uh, as presented because of the unique character of the yard and the protected trees. We got a motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman George. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman Elbin? No comment. Councilman Anderson? No comment. Councilman College? No comment. Councilman Galat? No comment. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman George? No comment. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson, for working with the citizen to accommodate them. All in favor? Motion carries. Aye. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Galat. <laughs> Come on, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Number um, five, consider a request for a special I'll, I'll exception. Here, you know. That's right. <laughs> consider a request for a special exception that would allow an accessory structure to be located on a lot without a primary structure in an R1 low density single family residential zoning district 1711 Great <laughs> Drive, GPC number 22 15 SE. Mr. Anderson. Yes, the planning department has received this request from Christine Clark for a special exception <coughs> that would allow an accessory structure to be located on a lot without primary structure in R1 ABC single family division. So this is not to confuse, but the applicant came in wanting power to this boat house structure on this parcel in R1 district. There is no primary structure. Our unified development ordinance does not allow accessory structures on a lot without a primary structure. So therefore, for me to approve power to this, I said you're going to need to get a special exception to have this accessory structure with no primary structure. So that's why we're here asking for this, so they can actually get power from, for us to release power to this, this boat house. Um, so I've included the criteria for a special exception as it's outlined in 416.4 of the UDO. Uh, I've actually included the applicant's responses to those criteria and the staff finding. I've also included the UDO definition of hardship and the recommendation from Planning Commission is that Planning Commission recommends that City Council deny the special exception due to lack of a hardship being proven. The City Council may approve the special exception, approve the special exception to change or deny the special exception. And again, I've included the complete packet and the excerpt from the GPC meeting is dated 622. And I'll be happy to answer any questions like an answer. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson. Do we have any citizen comments? If we do, stand up, come to the podium, stand up, state your name, address, and you have three minutes to speak. My name is Lynn Mullen. I live right next door to the Clarks. And I'm really here for my neighbor, the door chamber, that got the notice about this property. You know, I'd like to present some pictures to Mr. George, who I talked to on the phone. That's some there. And I also have some more pictures for you that I did not get built. Here's 
of the way it's being used there. He makes clear some of the problems. But um, it still has an amount of debris there. If you want to look at them, I'll drop down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So as soon as we come with the phone, I'll You can have it. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. So my question is, if uh, Ms. Clark uh, wants to put power down there, she had people down there fishing the other night on the property. So uh, I don't understand the reason. He's got a shrimp boat down there, a couple more shrimp boat down there. He's cleared out some of that property and hauled debris up onto this other piece of property. And has the city got the right to haul that debris off from his property, which you don't have no lights of electricity power on? Uh, I've always gotten along with my neighbors. I've been here in good shape for over 60 years. I had four neighbors that in the house that they are living in now. She went to the guy that uh, brought the property from, said, I don't like her. I don't know why, I've always gotten along with my neighbors. I don't know what they're trying to prove. And also I want to ask you a question. Is it fair to go on some other people's property, which he has used, he is using to this day, it's entitlement on somebody else's property? And he is using it. I do have some pictures of that. And I told Mr. George about that. And that's all I have to say. So I hope you can. But I have to say, not to offend them, because they are my neighbors. And I do want to get along with my neighbors, but I would want him to take the advantage of the situation. And I hope you all will understand that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? <clears throat> How y'all doing? All right. Good. Help. I'm Josie Johnson. I live on Trade Winds Drive at 2317. And I'm for them having power. I own a boat. You have a boat. You want security, you want lighting, um, you know, uh, safety, you know, just um, to prevent, uh, like we've had problems on our boat and we have lighting and also um, cameras. Okay, and also, isn't it there that if you give the power to one person in the city that doesn't live there, that it should be okay for others? Because my neighbor, has a little okay I used to live in the house while I was building my home and it had a garage they split the garage with the lot and sold the house and the lot separately okay while this happened the person that owns that lot lives across the street he's able to get power on that property for a boathouse and for lighting and cameras Okay, so I think the club should be able to also. I mean, it's only fair. You say you want us to enjoy our property. Well, you know, when you come in on a boat at night, it's nice to have lighting. I mean, this, it doesn't sound like much when you're not a boater, but it's a, a peace of mind safety. You know, because boats are just about as expensive as homes. That's all. Uh, That's true. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> thank you. Did you want to say something else? You still got oh, time. I was going to show you that they have power, but I don't think, you know, if, if you want to see the power box. <laughs> we, we know about that. Yeah. Well, but okay. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? Mr. Green. My name is Jack Green. I'm 1709 Seacrest Drive, George. <laughs> uh, our properties 
beat marks and ours. And uh, I could see across my body and their property and everything. And I don't see anything particularly wrong with it. He's got uh, equipment over there, boats on the trailers. And uh, when I, years back, when John Gatlin owned it after Katrina, I went over there and looked at a few things. The, uh, of course, the house was gone. Slab is still there that was under the raised structure and he had a small uh, shop, John Gatlin did. And he also had temporary power there. I don't see the big deal. And uh, these people are paying big time taxes because they can't claim homestead exemption. And uh, they can't build there because they're going to build, what, 25 feet up? And uh, so that's my point there. And uh, I don't know why anybody have an objection to it. You got boats, you got to have power. That's the way I see it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks, Mr. Green. Any other citizen comments? Sure. How are you doing? Yeah. O.W. Brown, I live at 1705 Seacrest, also 1701 Seacrest that got washed away in Katrina. I've been there for 30 years, right next door to Mr. Green. One of the biggest deterrents for crime on the bayou, and there's a lot of riffraff that runs around on the bayou, is a light, and I don't understand why. When John was there, there was a lot less people going to find by my house just by the lights and him having power down there. So I don't, I don't understand. I, I always thought there was still power at, at his old boat house, but I understand there's just a power pole and Jay's just trying to get the power turned on. And if anybody's tried to charge a boat, uh, you know, a battery on boat, for him, it, he'd have to go 300 yards to get power to charge the battery. So I wouldn't see a problem with it. I want four lots at the right next to the data seagrass. So I don't have any objection to it. So just wanted to stay my Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Brown. Any other citizens take your name and address? Okay. Let her go and then we'll let you because you had a minute left. So. Um, Lisa Carly, I actually live 3306 Ed Tide, but I actually walk all the way around the block twice a day. I, I believe they should have power because I agree with the situation about boats. You got your boat there, you want power, you want lights. I think part of the issue seems to be how things look. I walk past there every morning and every evening. My dog believes you can only go one way in the morning and one way in the evening. So I'm going from both directions. I see what we're looking at. All I can see from the street is the driveway. You can't see what's back there, whether they've got boats or junk or anything. You don't know what's back there. So aesthetically, it looks perfectly fine. It looks like woods. That's all you see. There's nothing ugly back there to look at. And I mean, I see it every single day. All I've seen is they clean things up. They've made things look better. They've gotten rid of a lot of the falling down trees from Katrina and things like that. But that's all that's, that's happened there. And all they want is power so they can secure their area. And I think they should have it. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. John Gatton had a home at the time. State your name and address again. The home was 1716 Drake Drive. Mr. John Gatton had a home there. This is sort of during the hurricane. They don't have a home there. So I can't understand why he needs electricity there. He works on his boat at the house right next door to me. He's using the property next door to him, which does not belong to him. And I think he's just taking advantage of the situation. That's all I have to say. It was a junkyard this week. It said in the July 2nd meeting. Yeah, in this chambers. Okay. That's all I have to say. Okay. Any other comments?
state your name and address and you have three minutes. My name is Christine Clark, um, 1712 Craigwinds Drive, also 1711 Craigwinds Drive, also the Jason. We were supposed to be there, so. And our parcel added 2319 Highway 90. Um, um, was here, you know, we, we uh, requested for the special exception of the Craigwinds Drive. Um, we purchased that with existing boat house and the meter, power meter, about five years ago. They all was there when we bought it. And, we, you know, uh, over the years, we fell in love with the neighborhood. So started planning on building them one day. But then as time passed by, we, we noticed the property would flood every storm surge and hurricanes. And Cristobal and Cedar flooded the property all the way up to the road. Like, to the game, like super hot. So, yeah, that, that, you know, that for us, you know, we're like, okay, this is, you know, this is scary. So we ended up buying the lot beside us up the hill. But then, you know, when we were trying to, you know, plan building there, um, the house in the front came up for sale. I mean, that's already built, and the material is so high. And we don't have to go through all, you know, and it's faster, and it's the price was so very good. So we ended up getting that, and that's just right across from the 1711, which we're, we're trying to turn the top on. So it's pretty much like an extension of our yard. We just cross that, and then you know. Um, so um, I like. Many others that live on that area, we, we were there because of the water, access to water. That has been our way of life. We used to have live in Moss Point in a waterfront also. We used to have eight boats over there. But when my husband, my husband, he was a dock master, also a licensed captain, and he lost his job, we sold everything we have to start the business, clerks at it. Every single boat we have, we sold that. We sold our rental property, everything. And we, you know, we started moving back here. We started going back to the water. So we found the trade winds property, which is perfect for what we love to do, you know. And uh, we found out we can turn up the power unless we build a house, which we, you know, we were supposed to, but then Zeta and Cristobal happened. And I have a video a picture over here, how far the water went. So you all know that I'm not making it up, I'm not taking advantage of the situation. We landed there, that's why we keep buying the property close to that. We didn't go nowhere. There was property bigger than what we have now in Ocean Spring, half of the half the price that we were we pay, you know, we were paying on that trade user. But we we still chose Doche because we love it. We, you know, we love it here, you know, even though some people don't love us, but we like it here. <laughs> some of, a lot of our neighbors, you know, are my customer, and they like that we moved there, and it was so happy. Every time they walk, we were like, you know, seeing family and friends, except for, I guess, <laughs> some people, which I don't understand. I don't understand why they, like, I don't know. I try to understand what we did to them, but they're not happy, but we tried. I even bought flowers, put flowers on that fish cup property, which did not really match our decor. So I had to plant, buy some flowers and plant there in our front yard. Maybe that will make them happy when they see it and they come out of their door. Guess what they told me? Those flowers are pretty, but because you put pretty flowers in your front yard, I don't see the mess you make in your backyard. Those are expensive. What do you do for a living? I want to know where you get your money. You should get a lot of money. You don't work. He don't work. How do they know that? We just moved there for two months. And we were building a little, we were staying in the house more than we normally do because we just moved. We were still moving. Actually, we were still fixing the inside. That's why we got a good deal because we had to fix stuff inside the house. We fix our efforts. We can't afford an expensive house, so we buy what we can afford, but we try to fix it ourselves, okay? So we, you know, I try to not think about anything else, but when you see somebody trying to picture of everything, you have something in your property, they take a picture. You try to remove it because you think it's not making them happy. They take a picture too. When he was on the road, they took a picture. The guy's working for me said, Mom, it's Christine. Um, Somebody was taking a picture of us putting this 
leaves on the road. Well, that's where it's supposed to go. Just make sure it's not going to be touching the road, you know. But they did what they did, and like every time I have somebody outside, they're swore they're going to get taken, their picture taken. I feel like I'm getting stopped, pr pretty much. And the words that was said to me, I feel like I'm being harassed. But I don't, I don't want to do make a big deal out of it because I just got there. They're just trying to know us, and we want them to know us. You know, we want to know them too. Maybe something in there, I don't know. But we were just, what we're here for is just to turn up on our own, so we can run everything that we need to do. We need to maintain that property, and there's a lot of times we have the generator so loud running over there. Now that we live right across, I've, I realize that thing is so loud. I wonder if nobody ever complained yet. I was hope I was expecting that would be their main concern. You are running this super loud generator the whole day. But no, I got other concern like I guess our tools, equipments that we use so we can feed our family, pay our bills, try to survive in this economy. And look, we put everything, everything we have in those shit, okay? We were this we were up. Uh, Discouraged by a lot of people before we moved here. But we believe in those shit. Okay? Even the water. They talk about the water. I don't care. I can buy me the filter system, filtration system. You know? Oh, your, your toilet. You can buy a white toilet. You gotta buy the yellowish toilet. Because it's gonna be yellowish. In I don't care. I mean, I, I got the yellowish toilet. I don't mind. I mean, because we love. Where we are at, we love the neighborhood. They are so good people, you know. Almost everybody of them, you know, almost a lot. And, you know, and, you know, be, we've been here in Goshe. Our business has been here for almost eight years. And at first, I felt like I, we were being, like, ignored and all. But late, lately, I've been feeling, like, motivated. I'm feeling like, you know, some inspirational, um, words from mayor, you know, for the person, somebody said something, oh, thank you, oh, that made my day, I'm like, awesome, we don't, they know we exist, but you know. Ms. Clark, I mean, we feel your pain. I do have a... in my yard that day that somebody talked to me, I'm not going to tell you. Do you have, um, Come on, mayor. you, are you, because your three minutes are up, do you have anything <laughs> very important to say? I'm only asking for your... I have I have one question. I have I have one question for you. Do you live at seventeen twelve? Yes, we do. Do you own the property, sir? Do you own the property? Yes, do you rent? Sir, we do. Okay, I was trying to, I was trying to find out where it was because I'm on the web map. It's that blue house, and it's still See, on. See, meant to be because I like everything blue, and that house is already blue. So like, wow. When did y'all buy that house? Just recently. Yeah, just okay. So it hasn't gone through yet. Okay. Yes, sir. That's why I I just now applied for the special exception, the exemption because you know now I have three. three. You know. Yeah. Okay. I, have, I don't want you to all go beyond and above because just because I want okay. power. I have more reason. You know, you don't have to. Okay. Thank you, Miss Clark. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other citizen comments? Tom Hattie, 2317 Trade, he was driving. The boat lift, she is. He's got to be grandfathered in. The house got taken away, but it didn't. He's got boats, he's used them. He pays taxes in the town. He's got a business in the town. He owns extra property, a house across the street. Plus, he's got a wife and a daughter. They love to go down to the property. Did any of y'all guys send y'all the wife and the dog? This is a habit. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? Yes, sir. No, the man, the man, you've, you've already spoken. Already. You had your three minutes. We're, we're not going to go any more character assassi assassinations against each other. So yeah, just we've because heard everybody a, speak, and everybody had three minutes, and we I allowed you to speak twice after you already spoke once. Okay. We've heard everybody's comments, and we've all had three minutes. 
Any other comments? Okay. Do we have a motion? Yes. I make a motion to consider a special exception that would allow an accessory structure on a lot with primary structure in an R1 low density single family residential zoning district located at 1711 Trade Winds Drive, Goche, Mississippi, GPC case number 22.15-SC. That's to approve, Mr. Uh, Councilman To approve. We have a motion by Councilman Anderson. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Elbin. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman Elbin. No comment. Councilman Anderson. Yes. We have a waterfront piece of property here. It's got a boathouse and a dock that's existed since before Katrina. The house was washed away by Katrina. An accessory structure is still there. And we're having to allow an exception on the, an accessory structure that's been there since before Katrina was there. I, I don't understand that to get power to it. Mr. Gatlin had power there before his house washed away. He had power there after the house was washed away at the accessory structure for the boathouse. A boathouse without a power a source to it or the accessory structure, not so much the accessory structure, but the boathouse itself without power it's like me not having power at my boathouse on Sioux Bayou. It'd be useless for me to have the boathouse I have with boat lifts in it and I can't have power to it. It's going to take a freestanding power pole, I assume, to allow him to have power there, whether it be a, a, a motor home or whatever it is. But we have ordinances already to prevent them from putting mobile homes or anything else in there. We've already covered with ordinances. There's no reason this man should not have power, and this lady should not have power to their boathouse to supply what they need for their shrimp boat. I do have concern about the property and what it looks like. Everybody says it looks fine from the street. I would also like the property to look good from the water because a lot of people come through there by water. And that, that's something we need to pay attention to. I don't know what it looks like myself. But all being said, they need power for an accessory structure that's been there since before Katrina hit. And that's all I got to say. Thank you, Councilman Anderson. Councilman College? Yes, it was brought up during somebody's comments that there's another house along that street that across the, that has a primary structure across the street from the waterfront property and they have power. Is this on trade winds also? I'm just trying to figure out Yes. Did I hear that? Who said yes? Yeah, in the back. And so it is. So, so basically, is there some sort of stipulation we can put? I understand the special exception. It carries with the land, correct? The special exception does it carry with the land or not? No, sir. No, it does not. Uh, my concern is if they because they work, they live across the street. I'm fine with that. Uh, they're in the area, but I'd like to, I don't want them to be putting other accessory structures on this property. I'd love that for them to have the power to their boathouse, to utilize that property as their, as their land for the boathouse, but then at the same time don't want shits getting strewn all across the place. So is there some sort of amendment that we can add to that special exception that requires them to where the only accessory structure allowable on this property is what's currently there? They would have to get a permit. Can I ask one question? Yes. Currently, uh, if they wanted to build another structure, what would they have to do on the property? They would have to build a house. permit to the planning department. So there's no additional, um, no additional use, no repairs, no. Well, to put another accessory structure it would require a special exception. It would it require so another special exception. Yes, sir. Okay, so this is not a, a, a grand all be all for any future accessory structures. This is just to get power strictly to this boathouse. Well, the, the memo says for, for an accessory structure, which is one structure. So and if, they to apply for, if they wanted to put another accessory structure on there, that special exception would not apply to, to accessory structure. Let me understand something. They were asking for power. No. For, they were asking for, temp, for power for the boathouse, but we told them that they can't have it unless they get an exception for the accessory structure. Correct. You're, you're, to, to clarify, y'all aren't approving power. Tonight. You're approving to have an a structure without primary structure. Yeah. 
I will, I can, I, we grant the power through Single River once we go inspect, make sure no safety uh, issues are present, and then we will release the power to the structure. Okay. Now, I will add that if this structure had power now, we, we wouldn't cut it off. It, it's only because it was, it's a non-conforming structure, and once they become vacant of power utilities for 180 days, then they lose their grandfather. What, uh, and I don't know if you know this off the top of your bat, or somebody, what's the approximate elevation of that property? Is it sitting probably about eight foot? Eight foot? Katrina got five point five foot. Five point five foot. So it's pretty much unbuildable. In order to build something up there, you wouldn't even be able to put a driveway to get to it because it would get inundated with water. So you'd have to be at probably what twenty four foot with a freeboard. Yeah, I'll go there. So I mean, twenty three to get in my house in Katrina. So, but we're going by what city ordinance is and the freeboard and stuff on it. So basically, I mean, this property could almost be deemed unbuildable as far as a purpose structure unless it's raised way up in the air. I know there is, there is a... Uh, There's a Slated River Power Pole and Transformer on the property back. It's already there. And it's yes, that all the DVDs is temporary. Well, that's the fly power for the home that was there. Okay. Yeah. What, I'm, what, I'm trying, what I'm trying to come up is I don't want to set a precedent for allowing power and accessory or an accessory structure in our wood uh, zoning district. But I think being that they live across the street, despite the fact there is right of way in there, uh, it can almost ambiguously be considered a, uh, you know, since they're right across the street, two properties across the street. We did approve an accessory structure recently for a similar situation where the property was not buildable. Correct. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman College. Um, Councilman Galat? He's sleep. I think you got disconnected. No comment. Okay. Um, Councilman Jackson. No comment. Councilman George. Um, I'd second what Adam said. I agree with him. You know, I, um, for one, as um, and I would like to recognize we have some planning commissioners here on this evening, and shame on me for not recognizing them. If you serve on the planning commission, or if you did serve on the planning commission, will you stand so we can just um, thank you for your service, Mr. Stubbs? You served, Mr. Stubbs. You served. Yes. <laughs> okay. um, thank you, Mr. Hoover and Mr. Stubbs, um, for y'all's service to the Planning Commission. Um, I, you know, and Ms. Yancey, we've battled this, you know, trying to figure out how to address it. And as you, we've heard tonight, we've heard the positive and we've heard the negative. Um, and both have good points. They're not, none of them are bad points. And they're both hard decisions to make um, when you're having to make a decision relating to this because a prime example just for everybody to know in another residential Merck area in the city that was in my ward three as councilman, um, we had homes destroyed in Katrina. Well, these people wanted to start getting a power pole and on the weekends, they wanted to bring their RV down and just start camping there every weekend. So that became an issue to the residents who had homes there because they were bringing all these RVs there. So it became a city issue with the planning department. So I just want y'all to see from both sides, we see the positive and we see the need but we also see where there could possibly not that the Clarks would do this um, because they we appreciate their investments. And as Ms. Clark says, I do go by there and toot my horn and appreciate them supporting our community and our events. So I, um, you know, I just think we need to come out to a way to figure it out. Mr. Hoover, he's in the same, um, he's got a neighbor next to him in the same situation. They own the lot across the road from their home. And it's a small lot. It's not even probably buildable, really. Um, and he just wanted a boat shed with power. But unfortunately, we told him um, we couldn't do it because it wasn't allowed. Um, 
So I just feel like if we as a city maybe can look at it, our um, the request the Planning Commission to look at it um, with Ms. Shancy and our Planning Director, Mr. Angerson and our City Attorney, and us try to address this so it don't become, you know, whatever happens tonight on this case will happen. But I do think we have, as Councilman um, Anderson said also in Councilman College, we have areas like down by the um, Horn Island Grill where there's a bulkhead and they need lighting and they need a security camera to monitor their boat. They don't have a house there, but they landscape it. It looks like golf course grass out there on their property, but they can't have power there. So the, now they can't keep their boat there and they do pay high dollar taxes on the property. So we got to be mindful of them, um, but also look out to the neighbors who live in those neighborhoods. Um, so if we, I would like to ask that we look at that um, and come up with some way so we don't, the residents that fit in maybe a situation like this don't have to keep coming before us. Can, can I ask one last question before we vote? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> would it be feasible from a legal standpoint to where the special exception is only valid and as long as they're owning that property across the street? Um, so that way, you know, they can't in the future say, well, we're going to sell this house that we live right across the street from it, but we're still going to utilize this property as a boat going back and forth the property and so forth. Being that I'm trying to combine this in a contiguous kind of way. Yes, sir. I, you, can, you can certainly put conditions on a uh, special exception. So I think you can do that. We, we would need an amendment to the motion. And I'd like to make an amendment that this special exception is valid while the applicants are owning the property and inhabiting the property across the street. We have an uh, amendment to the motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? A second. A second by Councilman Anderson. Any discussion on that, Councilman Elvin? No discussion. Councilman Anderson? No. Councilman College? No. Councilman Gallant? No comment. Councilman Jackson. Councilman George. Nope. I have no comment. So we need to vote on the amendment. All in favor? Councilman Delay. Aye. Motion carries on the amendment. Now we'll, we have a motion and a second on the original motion. All in favor? Councilman Delay. Aye. Motion carries. Mr. and Ms. Clark, just know that you have to abide by the Unified Development Ordinance on property care maintenance. So there's rules on that. So if you have any concern with it, just get with Mr. Ankerson and he can explain to you how to do it. Okay. Thank you. That brings us to business agenda item number six, resolution directing the placement of liens on properties located in Goche, Mississippi for fees and charges incurred by the city of Goche to abate the unsafe conditions of vac vacant structures pursuant to the Mississippi Code section 21-19-11. Stop presentation, yes, Mr. Ankerson. This is uh, we're bringing this before council for approval due to the fact that this is Housing County is requiring us to present it to them to actually do the recording on the liens. Um, we're aware that you have already approved these abatements and you've approved how you want to assess the damages, I uh, mean the costs, uh, but the county does not accept that. They want us to come back after the work's complete, put this on the agenda for y'all to approve it, then we can take these resolutions to the county and then they will actually place the, the, the liens. Uh, so we have to do this over and over every time we get a group of abatement? Yes sir, and just uh, to make y'all aware, we do have, how many, have how, how many do we have that we're having to bring back and forth? There's 15 more. There's 15 more coming. Those are the ones prior right. to the, yes, because yeah. we have a whole lot. This right. is putting, putting them in the form that the county the will accept. accept. Yeah. Okay. And then from here on out, once we catch these 15 up, then we know now how how the county likes it, and we will do them as the work is done. We'll put them back on the agenda and approve them. We won't use them anymore. So these are just. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson. Any public comments? No public comments. Do we have a motion? 
So moved. Motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman George. Oh, any discussion with Councilman Alvin? No Councilman Anderson? No. Councilman College? No comment. Councilman Gallat? No comment. Councilman Jackson? Councilman George? Scott, you've been busy lately. <laughs> you the only thing on our agenda. <laughs> no, we got some other things coming up. Thank you, um, um, Scott, for your um, work and making sure so we can get our taxpayers' money back. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings Aye. us. Oh, thank you, Councilman. <laughs> a lot. Sorry about that. Um, business agenda item number seven authorization to advertise for bids on the construction of the nano filtration water treatment plant project. Miss Dennett. Uh, or is Miss Yancey going to do? Well, actually, I, what I was going to do is just kind of tell you generally what it was and turn it over to the engineer. But this is actually, we have been working with the Corps to finish up the Corps' comments. The project then has to go to technical review, which is another part of the Corps. But while it's in technical review, they wanted us to go ahead and go out for bids for these, I call them bids, the inside of the treatment plant, because they're only building the building. But they need the shop drawings in order to complete the technical review. So that is what we are doing, and the skids are something we are providing. So this is to go out for bid for the skids that go inside the water treatment plant building. When I'm Brian, when you went on, this yeah. is Brian Barjay. He's been kind of heading up this uh, with Wagner. Well, that's Scott. No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, why don't you introduce everybody with you? So, I'm, with I'm you. Brian Barjay from Wagner Engineering, and I've been working on this project for a good while now with the Corps of Engineers. But, uh, but, but, but this portion is just the, the actual the manual filtration unit that's going to go in. It's going to be four huge skids that's that probably about 15 by 15 by about maybe 40 foot long each one. So it's four of them back together. So it's a lot of pumps and piping and all in the place. It's got the uh, clean and place product. It's a bunch of tanks too. So it's a lot of, it's not, it, it's a pretty big track. But it's the major part of the whole nano filtration unit when it's constructed and everything. So it's, it's, it's a big piece. But this is just for the uh, equipment only. The core's going to put it all together put it in. But, but what we're going to get out of this is some shop drawings that the core is going to be able to put that in their bid documents so that their contractor will know exactly where to pipe things to and from. So there's no question as to how to construct it. So that's why it's two separate parts. And we did it two separate parts. We could, it would have been a lot easier just to have one project and build the whole thing. But the core adds an extra percent fee for their maintenance of the contract and everything. So we took this out so that we took that fee out. So, well, thank you. Would you like to introduce the rest of your team that's here this evening to the it's citizens? Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Thank y'all for coming down to visit us. What did you say your name was again? What did you say your name was again? Carlos Bell. Carlos Bell. Is with, he's our new area manager. I live here. So you ready? Let's <laughs> get some water, huh? Okay. Oh, you don't live Thank in the ocean, just the area? I live in, I live on the coast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank y'all for coming. <laughs> she left. She <laughs> we should have had you before they. Um, they did uh, clean water bad. Okay. Do we have any public comments? Mr. Olson, you want to state your name and address in three minutes? Mark Olson, 2504 Robert Hiram Drive. Is the ionization plant still going to be utilized or is it going to be decommissioned for the, with this? It's going to be utilized. It's a one NGD ionization plant. Mm -hmm. So this will provide an additional three million a day, which will total four. So with the addition of the LARP, 
meadow filtration plant, which we just got federal money for, the water well, it should make all the water in Gaucher clear, both north and south. But there will be a division between the two plants then? This plant is what they serve? A couple of miles. No. It's not no. one spot. It's out of the same spot. It can either go to the man, the iron or to the man. So now, the, the thing about the iron exchange is that you've got to regenerate the resin. And then, so you get clean water for I don't know how long, but, but then you got to get, you got to turn it off. So we'll, we'll, we'll put it in and go back to clean. Now, the man there, it's a redundant, it's basically four NGD, but one's going to be sitting there idle. So you got three running. This one needs to be cleaned out, put that one on, take that one off. So it's, it's going to always have water, clean water. It'll be a 24 7 water clarification system in lieu of the system we have now that has to be backwashed on this day. It shuts down. The current one shuts down. Now. You can have it, like if you have a really high water demand, crank the whole thing up to get the iron same thing and they know going. And you turn it off at night time, it'll be jammed. It'll work out for you. Paul, how many million per day is the Lord going to be? I, was I that all, Mr. Olson? Was it two? I'm sorry. It's one inch you need. Mr. Olson, was that all you had? Yes. Okay. I still didn't understand. Million, yeah. one, one, okay. Yeah, okay. Any other citizen comments? No. Okay. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a motion by Councilman George. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman College. Any discussion? Start with Councilman Elvin. No discussion. Councilman Anderson. No discussion. Councilman College. Just based on this, we're going to get the shop drawings for these nano filtration systems to get the pipe in, but. Are they going to be able to, I guess, fabricate and store these uh, assemblies until such time as the pre-engineered metal building and slab and everything is placed? It's going to take probably about 24 weeks to manufacture these. So, but the, uh, it's in the core contract, so they know that they're going to have to unload and store it somewhere. So, so they'll. It'll be their contractor responsibility to do it. We don't want to do anything with it. Okay, so once we award this contract, we're pretty much out of it as far as installation or anything else. We're just purchasing the material only. Yeah. Gotcha. Government, core called the GFD, Government Furnished Equipment. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Councilman Galat? Yeah. you No comment. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman George. Uh, thank you, everyone involved. I know this is a very big, cumbersome, difficult project, and it means a lot. We need it. I hear it every day, and I'm ready. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank all the staff who works on it, and I don't want to forget anybody, but um, thank all of you and our engineering firm and our public works that works with y'all um, service provider to get you information. But also, I want to thank the key players who help secure the funding. At the end of the day, we wouldn't be able to do this without our congressman and our senator, Cindy Hudd-Smith and Congressman Palazzo and um, Senator Wicker. They've all played a big part in that. They've all supported us. And so if you see them out and about, make sure you thank them because they see water clarity is a big issue here in Goche and it also affects economic development. And as you heard from our resident, she still came here even though we have brown water. So we thank her um, for giving us that chance. Um, with that being said, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Oh, Councilman. Um, Councilman Glott. <laughs> Gee, I guess I'm gonna have to get that over here. Um, Business Agenda 8, authorization to prioritize and submit three applications to Mississippi De um, Department of Marine Resources for FY 2024 Tidelands Pro Public Access Funding. Ms. Stennett. Yes, sir. Um, it's just time to apply for Tidelands funding again, so I'm bringing forward three projects to you for prioritization. We have to prioritize each application that we send in. Uh, we've listed them here um, in recommended order for Mary Walker Bayou Parks project, which includes Town Commons Park and George Martin City Park. Um, the second priority is Shepherd State Park um, improvements, and the third as a rehab, <coughs> mode launch, and finger pier and potential parking on Fairway Drive. 
they've been listed in this order due to likelihood of funding. And um, I just want you to discuss and prioritize those for us tonight, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any public comments? No public comments? Okay. Do y'all um, a motion with them um, prioritized for the staff? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman George in the order that was presented by the um, staff. Um, any discussion starting with Councilman Elvin? No discussion. Councilman Anderson? No discussion. Councilman College? We submitted for the boat ramp on 2023 also, correct? Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I thought so, I just wanted to make darn sure. <laughs> Councilman Gallant? No comment. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman George? No comment. Um, good job meeting those deadlines because they surely have been sending the emails to us. <laughs> All in favor? Motion carries. Um, Councilman Gallat? Aye. Motion carries. <laughs> Look, I'm more important of getting your comments. Um, that brings us to business. My comment. No comment. <laughs> Uh, business number um, nine approval of the docket of claims they've been provided to us by our um, city clerk they've been online they're in our packets um, so everybody has been furnished them do we have any public comments no public comments do we have a motion I make a motion we approve the docket of claims provide that all entries thereon are true correct properly entered and not fraudulent we have a motion by Councilman College do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman George. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman Elvin? No discussion. Councilman Anderson? No. Councilman College? No. Councilman Gallat? No. Councilman Jackson? No, sir. Councilman George? No. All in favor? Councilman Gallat? Aye. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> That brings us to our consent agenda. All items are approved in one motion unless somebody wants to pull one. One, approval of minutes from regular council meeting held June the 7th, 2022. Two, receive May 2022 privilege license report. Three, receive April 2022 finance report. Four, authorization to accept a donation of 12 basketballs from Phil Torgerson, a Goche resident for the city of Goche's Baco Park's new basketball court. Approval of five, approval of an agreement between the reigning champs football LLC and the city of Goche to allow the parks and recreation department to participate in the NFL flag football program with the added addendum. Six, approval to renew the professional service agreement with Seymour Engineering for our general services engineering. Um, seven, approval to accept monetary donations for the City of Goshite's Cruise and Through the Decades event. Eight, approval of a contract addendum with Mississippi Department of Marine Resources to extend the grant deadline for the Shepherd State Park kayak and boat launch. Does anybody want to pull one? I'd like to pull number four for discussion. Councilman Anderson pulled number four, so anybody want to pull anything else? Do we have a motion to approve one through three and five through eight? So moved. Motion by Councilman Jackson. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman George. All in favor? Motion carries. Yeah. Um, Councilman Gallat. Aye. Thank you. That brings us to um, consent agenda item number four, authorization to accept a donation of 12 basketball goals from Phil Torgerson, Goche resident for the city of Goche's Baco Park. Yes, I understand former Mayor Phil Torgerson donated 12 basketballs and a basketball stand. And I understand the basketball stand was destroyed Yes, it was not commercial grade. And so what happened was, the kids were being kids, all the basketballs were being used and they're shooting them. And the little kids got on the 
thing and started playing on them and it fell apart. Okay, they, so were, just, they were just playing on them. They didn't deliberately no, destroy no, it. No, they were just climbing on and it and riding each other. Riding it. Yeah. So, what, basically, <laughs> so I told Chastity to go get a wall mounted basketball. What do you call it? It's, it's called a basketball locker. That's a basketball locker. It will mount to the brick column. Yeah. And we can actually lock it if we need to lock it. Oh, great. That sounds great. I don't see how to put the basketballs in Okay, the I, I misunderstood. I thought it was deliberately destroyed. It was an accident. They just kids playing on it. Right. Oh. Uh, Okay. Councilman Anderson might not have saw the email. Did you see Ms. Chancey's email about yeah, it? I, yeah, and I, oh. I, I must have misunderstood it. Oh, okay. I, I took it as though that it was torn up deliberately and not accidentally oh. from playing. Okay. okay, thank you. That's all I got. Okay, do we have a motion to authorize authorization to accept the basketballs? So moved. We got a motion by Councilman Anderson. Do we second. have a second? Second by Councilman Jackson. All in favor? Councilman Gallant? Aye. Motion carries. That brings us to our study agenda. Number one is discuss citizen comments. You got three minutes. Come to the podium and state your name and address. Blood Stubbs, 2501 Bayou Bend Road. I just have a quick question concerning the bill paying for the water bill, one of my favorite subjects. Mm. Uh, mm. Is, is the drop of window no longer in existence? Or no, it's, it's been closed for years. Okay, is it going to be opening up or, you know, because when you come to pay your bill, to me it's congestion, you know, they have to walk in, you park your car, there's other people waiting to come in. Or you could just drive through it. Yes, sir. I wasn't here then, but I think they closed it due to the clearance. Somebody can jump in here. Right? The clearance for when you drove through is too small. They closed it, and now, due to the auditors, they've also closed the. You can only use the night drop for night dropping. In other words, it cannot be open during busy during the day, according to the. But audit. it is open for night drops. Yes, and on the weekend. And on the weekend. Yes, sir. Um, okay, I'll ask my comment. Any other citizen comments? Okay, that brings us to our council comments. It's our second meeting of the month, so we'll start with Councilman Albin. Clearwater, I thank you again for going above and beyond on that situation on the PowerPoint. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank Waste Pro, Fear Water, and the City Departments for your hard work. Appreciate it. Couldn't do it without you. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Anderson. I'd like to thank the Wagner Engineering folks for being here tonight, and I'd just like to remind you to uh, keep a fire lit under the Corps of Engineers, if you could, please. Mm -hmm. Keep this thing moving forward, because our water is clean, but it's brown, and it's this you can't wash white clothes, you can't do this, can't do that. Thank y'all for being here though. That's all I got. Thank you, Councilman Anderson, Councilman College. It's gonna be short and sweet. Ditto what Councilman Elvin and Councilman Anderson said. Oh. Um, thank you, Councilman College. Councilman Gala. Ditto. <laughs> thank you, Councilman Gala. Councilman Jackson. Yeah, um, I want to thank the police department. They did a great job at getting things slowed down. The issues that I had in the um, in uh, my ward, um, they really worked hard and got got things uh, uh, to look like it should look in the community. And um, the cameras and things that we have uh, on Bay Cop Park, they really sent the, <clears throat> a signal out. <clears throat> excuse me to those that want to get in trouble on the park. It sent a clear message, you know, now it's, I can see the change in the atmosphere. Uh, of course, you know, I'm out there all the time. I don't care who's out there, you know, so, um, so I'm out there with them and uh, paying attention to them. But I can see a definite change. Uh, a lot of younger people are coming out there, you know, really enjoying it. Um, and a diverse of people are going coming out there to enjoy the park as well. So, um, you know, it's just, it looks like everything is moving forward. I'm just, just kind of like giving everybody a, 
the information of what's going on in Baycott Park, and you know, because it's really like the center part of my of my ward and all of our wards in that, you know, Ward Three and Two and uh, One. Uh, so you know, it's just um, it seems like things is going well. You know, I, I'm really feeling confident in the future of this ward, and thank you. Thank you, Councilman Jackson. Councilman. George? Uh, I just want to thank David Bever, and uh, I know you had some help in it too. So, <laughs> but that presentation, I'm really impressed. I mean, it was really good. Uh, it's good. It feels good to know you guys are leading the department very well. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the lights that you discussed on top of the car with the blue on each end, is that something we need to purchase, or is that like something you add on to the light? Uh, it's a feature that already exists. It just hasn't been I used? Just, yeah, so basically, it, uh, quote, to give you program okay. and activate a button on your switch panel. Could that come out of the money that we just were awarded? The 500? Yeah, we haven't been awarded it yet. Well, if we get awarded. I don't see it being that expensive. All we got is that it's a little black box. Whatever. Okay, cool. Because I like the idea of saying, you know, residents are like, you know, we're not getting patrol. You are, you just don't recognize the car. There they are. Uh, thank you, Fire, everything you do. Uh, I remember the emails that we had gotten previously about repainting one of the fire engines. Repainting? Or painting it the blue with the logos. Is that still going or what's the update on that? It was an order. It, order. it, it order. takes a while. Oh, we ordered, takes, oh, yeah. we ordered a brand new one. Yeah, we're okay, going okay. over here until next year. Okay, I was going to It wrong. just takes so long. Okay. We're in, we're in um, the engineering phase for now. Okay, all right, cool. Um, other than that, I'm really, I'm really excited about the water progress. I'm going to put an update later in my group on Facebook, let everybody know what's happening with it. But uh, other than that, we've been here long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all you have? That's it. Okay. Um, I just want to give a shout out to all of our staff because y'all all do a great job and our service providers are doing a good work with the staffing they have, and I know they have staffing issues, but you're doing the best you can do on limited staff. Um, and our engineering services, we couldn't um, get any projects done without you all, so thank you all for your hard work and your commitment to GoCho. But this past week, um, we had a, and we had been wanting to do these, um, neighborhood watch, get them started. And I just want to thank the police chief and his whole command staff um, for organizing. They had started one up in Hickory Hills and we kicked off and Councilman College and Councilman Anderson and I were there and y'all did a great job and that meant so much to the residents and they look forward to that. And we will be doing them as the chief said in other wards um, and we will be announcing them for them to come um, hear the same spill and get informative information. But thank you all for spending your um, night, evening with us, um, educating our citizens, because it did mean a lot to them. Also, thank our recreation department. Y'all been doing a lot of events, and I want to encourage our um, citizens to follow us on the app or on the community service page and like and share it. I mean, just don't look at it. Um, I encourage you to like it and share it um, because that gets more interest so they um, more people see it. So I encourage you to do that um, for our events and I encourage you to attend all of our events or at least try to attend one every now and then and support your community. Even if you don't have children, you can go out there and be a part of them. Um, that means a lot to them because a lot of them don't have mentors at home and need a mentor, as Councilman Jackson said. Um, and as I get messages constantly from educators in the school system about Baco Park, how they drive past there, and it reminds them of old days of youth out there, it just, it's heartwarming to hear those. Also, I would like to share an email with you all that I received that said, hey, Mayor Vaughn, I wanted to praise your wonderful team members. I needed some assistance and understanding of my property. 
I'm Felicia Nichols Coleman, and Patrick F Fagan from Code Enforcement was so helpful in explaining what I need to do to get this situation resolved. I truly appreciate Patrick's knowledge and the time he took to help me. My home is in Goche, Mississippi. I purchased the home many, many years ago. I now live in Louisiana and I used to rent it, but renters sometimes will destroy your property. I decided to renovate the property because I did not want to abandon my community slash neighbor. Goche is looking great. When I come home to visit, I stay in my Goche home. I like my neighborhood there. I was trying to improve the look of the property and did not want to just sell it. Again, I appreciate your team. May God continue to bless Goche and you and your fine team members. Thank you, Felicia Nichols Coleman. So I just wanted to share the positivity. We always hear the negative more than we hear the positive, but there is positive in your hard work, and I hate Patrick had left, but uh, I ask that you share that with us. I also will ask the board, you all received at your station, I received an email from the county this morning. The Board of Supervisors did an MOU they, um, and a resolution. We had previously done just a resolution waiting for their MOU to be sent to us. So we need to, um, if we could have a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding between the Jackson County Board of Supervisors and the city of Goche, Mississippi. That was presented to everyone this evening. I make a motion that we approve the resolution of Board of Supervisors of Jackson County, Mississippi, approving the exec execution of a memorandum of understanding to provide assistance to the city of Goche for the replacement of the deteriorated storm pipe, drain pipe between US Highway 90 and Old Spanish Trail between the properties of Jackson County Civic Action Committee and Goche Presbyterian Church within the city. We have a motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman George. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman Albin? No. College. Councilman Anderson? No. Councilman College? No. Councilman Goliath? No. Councilman Jackson? No, sir. Councilman George? Um, Adam, have you ever worked as an auctioneer? Because <laughs> 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 I was fast. I just want to thank our staff and our engineering, um, Mark, with um, you all's hard work and partnership with the county, and want to thank the county for their partnership to address this need. If you drive by Civic Action, you can see their playground is falling in and unsafe. So we appreciate our Board of Supervisor, Ken Taylor, and all the supervisors for their um, con continue help for the city of Goche and our citizens. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Councilman Gallat? Aye. Motion carries. And last but not least, it was an honor to receive this morning a phone call from our congressman who continues um, to do work for the city of Goche. And you heard our chief touch on it earlier, but I can't stress the importance that our um, Senator, I mean, Congressman Palazzo continues to do for us in Washington. Um, as you know, the city's request was for 507000 for the Goche Police Department for equipment upgrade, and it's been included in the FY23 House Commerce Justice and House Subcommittee. This is a huge win for Goche as it is a direct result of our continued advocacy and efforts in Washington, D.C. by our congressman. He is um, in his Long longevity on the House Appropriations Committee. So once again, if you see Congressman Palazzo out and about in your commu our community or anywhere, please thank him for what he continues to do for us and his partnership with the city of Goche. And with that, I do not have any other comments. I will let Ms. Shancy have her comments. I'm going to make y'all slide. I have It's been long. <laughs> And um, Emily, do you have any, Miss Dickerson, our deputy clerk? She does. And that brings us to our city attorney, Josh, Mr. Danos. No. Okay. And. <laughs> do we have? Uh, um, and thank all of you for coming this evening. And Miss College, you're way back there. Um, 
do we have a motion to adjourn until July the 5th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m.? So moved. We got a motion by Councilman second. College, a second by Councilman George, um, Jackson. Yeah, All in favor? <laughs> Councilman Goliath? Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much. You have a great evening.